This video details the steps needed for Trogoderma adult beetle dissection. It has been produced by the Department of Agriculture and Food, Western Australia, with CRC Plant Biosecurity. Methods and dissections have been done by Andrew Sido, script by Andrew Sido and Cameron Bromley, production, editing and narration by Cameron Bromley, and photography by Piers Scanlon. The capra beetle, Trogoderma granarium, is recognised as one of the world's most destructive pests of grain products and is subject to strict quarantine measures in many countries. Their reliable identification and separation from dozens of very similar looking domesticated species is crucial to maintaining a country's area of freedom. Adult specimens are easier to identify than larval forms, though they are often found dead and damaged from grain movement. Species level identification requires examination of the genitalia which are usually protected inside the abdomen. It is important to have on hand the right equipment to carry out the dissection. We recommend using quality fine pointed forceps and scissors. The choice of scissors is very important and it is likely that poorly suited scissors will damage the specimen. We use scissors with a 45 degree bent blades and 2mm cutting edge. A range of homemade micro tools can also be useful to have on hand. For genitalia dissection, the adult beetles first need to be heated in hot 10% KOH or NaOH solution. This helps soften the body contents and begins to dissolve the internal tissues. Here, the preserving ethanol is siphoned off and KOH added to the vial. The specimens are then heated to around 70 degrees centigrade for 15 to 20 minutes, preferably using a dry block heater where the temperatures can be controlled. The specimen is then placed back in ethanol into a cavity glass or concave microscope slide ready for dissection. First the abdomen is separated from the body by pressing at its base. The KOH should have softened the specimen enough for it to separate easily. For female beetles, the tergites are then cut or ripped laterally, leaving the last segment untouched. This is where quality forceps can make a big difference. Here, we are carefully holding the abdomen with one pair and using the other pair of forceps to tear the more flexible tergites free. These stages can be carried out under a simple stereo microscope. In this image, you can see that the KOH has not properly dissolved the abdominal cavity contents. The abdomen should be placed back into warm KOH until the desired outcome is reached. With this specimen, we use a slightly different technique to separate the tergites. After separating the abdomen from the body, it is carefully held with one pair of forceps. The other pair of forceps are compressed and inserted into the abdominal cavity and then expanded. The abdomen should separate along the edges of the tergites. It can then be easily separated further if need be. Commonly, with male specimens, the genitalia can simply be pushed out with some gentle pressure. Here, you can see the male genitalia has been further removed from the abdomen.
After being placed on a slide, using microtools, we are carefully separating out the male adiagus from the remaining tissue. Care is needed during this process as it can be easily damaged. After it has been orientated correctly, a cover slip is placed over the medium. Here we have used glycerol as a short term mountant. The adiagus is now ready for examining. From the female genitalia, we have mounted in a similar fashion the sclerites in the bursa copulatrix. These are more robust and less prone to breakage. Once examinations have finished, the separate body parts, including the genitalia, should be mounted on a cardboard rectangle for curation as shown. Water miscible glue is recommended so the specimen can be easily soaked off if further examination is required. Housing the genitalia in a microvial with glycerol is not recommended as it has a reduced lifespan.